be sick. <laughs> Seeing Luke Moore's penis is not the way I want to start the show. <laughs> it's happened now, hasn't yeah. it? Well, you should have said then. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Taken over the studio. You He's gone calcy mental. You can't decide, so I will. Pete, you go first. All right, man. Uh, this is one about Peter Beardsley, our um, much beloved Peter Gr- Be- Peter Beardsley. Stop uh, trying to say Beardsley. Peter Beardsley. <laughs> Peter Beardsley. <laughs> Peter Beardsley. <laughs> Peter Beardsley. <laughs> Nothing, to, <laughs> Nothing to do with you, Kelsey United. <laughs> Peter Beardsley. <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> Peter Beardsley is uh, perhaps best remembered for his somersaulting goal celebrations and a career that saw him play until he was 40 years old. But often overlooked is the fact that he once rode a motorcycle <laughs> through a hotel plate glass window. <laughs> Oh, this is from the archive, this one. <laughs> this has been sat at the bottom of the funny stories list forever. It's <laughs> been a bit of a quiet week. Yeah. I don't mind letting you through the curtain. But, but it is an absolute classic. You know what, right? I didn't know that story. You get that in from me, and I'm so glad that that's come out. That is superb. After, uh, after a bo- moon is celebrated somewhere. <laughs> it's like, after a boozy late night out following a, a game with Real Sociedad on a pre-season tour with Everton, Beagre persuaded a passing motorcyclist to giving a lift, giving him a lift back to his hotel. <laughs> on arrival, he decided against working the night porter and commandeered the Spaniard's bike before riding up the hotel steps and straight through a plate glass window <laughs> of the building. <laughs> that poor Spaniard. Oh, get this. Get us though, it was the wrong hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and he required 50 stitches. <laughs> he thinks he's blooming, I don't know, Axel Foley. I think. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 I'm gonna ride upstairs. <laughs> I'm gonna. Open the <laughs> mini bar with the wheel. Oh. <laughs> oh, How goodness. the hell would you manage to persuade someone to give them your bike? <laughs> Ter- terrible person. Oh, Peter Beagley, watch this. <laughs> 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 Sorry, wrong person. He tried to do a somersault with him. He yeah. thought he was evil can evil. And that's how, that's how the celebration started. He was <laughs> thrown off his bike through a plate glass window. <laughs> Gee, p- in pre-season as well. Oh. <laughs> That's not preparation, is no. it? No. James or Jim is with us. Hello. Andre Asharvin recently said that Arsenal need more taller players. Mm. Gentlemen, who is your favourite tall player from the history books? <laughs> from the history books? Yeah. So I go. Yeah. My favourite was actually Yang Cheng Peng. He plays for. He plays for. Can I, can I continue, please? It's not a laughing matter. Oh, I mean, I mean, we 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 sort of operate under the precipice, the illusion that uh, Mark has just pulls these questions out of his ass well, about five Pete. minutes I'm, before I'm, we start. I'm, Why have you somehow got this information? Well, you know, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit of a part-time supporter of Three Gorges Kang Tian. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the Chinese, in Chi- Chinese uh, first division, um, he's from China. Yeah, <laughs> Yang Cheng Peng plays for uh, yeah three gorgeous Kang Tian. He's six foot nine. He's a striker. He's actually the uh, the tallest professional footballer in the world. <laughs> and if I could just bring it back to more familiar shores, he actually once had a one month trial with Bolton in two thousand and six. Is he surprisingly good with his feet? I'll just sit back and uh, await the points. <laughs> <laughs> Wanker. <laughs> Um, uh, I'm surprised Allardyce doesn't sign him. <laughs> yeah. He had a trial with Bolton. Yeah. Well, Allardyce was probably there, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't researched it, so I don't know if that's okay. <laughs> mm. You James. haven't researched it. Oh, bloody excellent, that oh. was. Thank you very much. Yeah. Operatic. It yeah. is the funny stories. Shall I go first? And Luke will go first. Okay, um, we're, we're going to take you back through the annals of time. So if you can imagine yourself in ni- in the summer of 1994... Oh, I can, I can! The Liverpool Spice Boys and all that sort of thing. World Cup 94 <laughs> um, too. While on holiday... Well, this man in question wasn't at the World Cup. No. Um, <laughs> while on holiday in Iron Apra in 1994, an inebriated Don Hutchinson <laughs> <laughs> hid his wedding tackle behind a Budweiser label. Uh, when a... <laughs> When a bystander snaps appeared in the tabloids, his manager at Liverpool, Roy Evans, declared, if Hutchison is flashing his cock again, that's out of order. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Roy. Hutchison had form. A year earlier, had spotted female students videoing their graduation celebrations in a wine bar, unzipped his flies and announced, zoom in on this. (laughs) 
<laughs> he was fined five thousand pounds, dropped from Liverpool's first team squad, transfer listed, and eventually shipped off to West Ham, where he was known to fans and teammates as Budweiser. Amazing. Oh, that Roy Evans quote is such a typical football quote. Yeah. <laughs> if Hutchinson is splashing his cock again, that's out of order. <laughs> that's out of order. That's from the archives, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Jeez. I thought I thought we go. Oh, wow. Heartwarming. Superb stuff. This has been Thank a very, very self-congratulatory email section so mm. far. I have to say. Liam and Clitheroe, uh, I salute you? you with both hands. Marvellous. So. Oh, I have an email here, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Um, this is from a young chap called Kevin in Fife. That's in Scotland. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> I know you have. Dear Ramble, last year my class could not behave, so it meant we <laughs> never got practical lessons on the Friday. <laughs> Me and the boys were raging, apart from some of the fatter lads. <laughs> <laughs> Our teacher, who is a good guy at times, said if we behaved, we could listen to some football stuff. We n- <laughs> we never knew what the moron meant. <laughs> He's a good guy. Yeah. We never knew what the moron <laughs> meant, so we basically carried on with the nonsense and fun. Our t- <laughs> this is superb. Our teacher put the ramble on, and there was utter silence. We all loved it, apart from when you talk about old football, as that's a bit dull. <laughs> Good point, well made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Note Educa- to ed- self. Education, Kevin. Yeah. This yeah. Is your footballing education. Yeah. Um, we behaved. Which is getting at school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is wrong with the education in this country? I don't know, Pete, but it's just gone We up. are, apparently. It's just gone up a level. Um, <laughs> we be- we- I'm not finished. We-, we behaved better and stuff. And we were to get our practical sessions back, but we never wanted them. So we asked if we could get more theory. Thankfully, we did. Towards the end of last season, <laughs> our, this is quality. Towards the end of last season, our assistant head in brackets wank <laughs> came in and was saying, "Well done and good job." And he noticed the pod on in the background. One of you guys on the show swore, and our teacher got in trouble. We never get the ramble anymore. <laughs> I do because I got a computer, but most people don't have a comp in the house. I reckon some of these animals don't have toilets, but I won't hold it against them. <laughs> Me and the boys are creating havoc now in PE. We always shout Ramble Fools Ho just randomly in the corridor and even in uh, the classes and our assistant teacher can just piss off. (laughs) That's that's from Kevin in Fife and he ends by saying we will not give up your fight. (laughs) In my head, in my head, that's Kevin from Home Alone. (laughs) (laughs) Pete's nearly dying. That's emotional. Kevin in Fife, you've just made Kevin week, month, Oh, Sod it, yeah. That yeah. was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, was that you that wrote that? <laughs> oh, 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 it takes yeah. you back. That's lovely. Oh, Vanilla ice, it'd be quite good, maybe. <laughs> well, uh, fair enough, James. <laughs> well, let's move on to Brazilian striker Wagner Love. Always yes. a good move, I think. Yeah. Um, he sounds like a rapper. He, he does. does yeah. <laughs> maybe he's interested. He'd be more in like part. an R and B singer, yeah, more yeah, cheesy. In, interestingly enough, the um, the palace administrator, if Wagner Love is willing to buy the club, he'll fly to Rio to, <laughs> to meet him. Um, however, he might not attend one of the parties that Wagner Love goes to. I'll tell you why. Uh, he was filmed entering a party in uh, one of the favelas in Rio de Janeiro, accompanied by armed drug dealers. Um, one of them was wielding a Swedish anti-tank weapon, which was used by the US military in Iraq and Afghanistan. Why are the Swedes anti-tank yeah, and, and why are there Swedish <laughs> tanks in Brazil? <laughs> Uh, is he getting confused uh, yeah. with Wagner? That's what you've done the there, Joe. Apocalypse now. He's going to be carried away with his name. The case was reported by TV Globo, but uh, Wagner Love was saying that it's uh, it's quite normal the presence of gunmen in. No, uh, well, hang on, no, uh, way. not with Swedish anti tank. <laughs> Has he got it down his trousers? This anti tank weapon. Well, um, how's he going to set it off? This yeah. <laughs> Why does he need it? That's the, yeah. what's surely all weaponry is anti-tank. If you what's fire it after <laughs> tank, what's he going to shoot? <laughs> oh, Those streets in the favelas are pretty. What was the party like last night? Rubbish! I took an anti-tank with <laughs> <laughs> a tank inside. It wasn't even a tank there. I feel like an idiot now. Uh, um, it, this was um, in late December, but it's only just sort of come out now. Um, all this sort of stuff. Apparently, the gun, which is an AT4, was uh, d- identified by the operational chief of civil police, Carlos Oliveira, and he said it's defined 
defined as anti-tank weapon. It is not anti-personnel weaponry. It is used against vehicle with a range of 300 metres. That, that doesn't make it better. <laughs> no. It's People like, are still going to get stuff, hurt. Though, it's, the way it's, like, it's like we said uh, the shooter fired indiscriminately at the crowd. I'll tell you what, if you get hit by a bullet, I will tell that personally. That's yeah. discriminatory. <laughs> that bullet discriminated against yeah. me. And the, th- the way he talks about this anti-tank weapon, it's, it's almost like he's saying, if it's fired at a person, it won't hurt them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not anti-personnel. No, don't worry about it. You're completely safe. <laughs> I've got <laughs> Yeah. Oh, fire it at me. The only thing it will blow up is a Swedish tank, I'm yeah. telling you. <laughs> and what are the chances of that in Rio? Oh. The most ineffectual weapon in Rio. Yeah. <laughs> a Swedish anti- will it hit a Norway ta- Norwegian tank? No. <laughs> Bounce right off it. Would. It's like an anchor Swiss man. neutral. No. An yeah. anchor man when they have that fight and uh, one of them has got a hand grenade. Yeah. <laughs> it's such an inappropriate weapon for, a, for a, an intimate venue. <laughs> Why have you chosen that? It's Not easy to weapon. conceal, pull out. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. no way you're going to set that off and leave alive if you're <laughs> at a party. <laughs> exactly. And those kind of weapons, they probably don't have safety catches. No. I mean. <laughs> it's a it's a disgrace. <laughs> Shambolic. Let's kick anti- anti-Swedish tank weaponry out of the football. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, Anti-Swedish. <laughs> no, it's made in Sweden. It's not no. anti-Swedish. It's probably, it's probably pro-Swedish, actually. <laughs> I thought I was... This email's from Stefan in Iceland. Uh, Dear Ramblers, I was recently catching up on a few old shows, and one in particular inspired me to write you this email. The inauguration of Barry Davies to the Dean Windass Hall of Fame, to be exact. Here in Iceland, we have been football crazed ever since you lovely Brits sent us a week old match on a black and white VHS many, many winters ago. <laughs> Our own Barry Davies, or Bjarni Fell, Ooh. aka the Red Lion, used to commentate on the first matches, which cool. were, as I said earlier, a week old, thus often proving a superior insight to the game by starting. <laughs> is commentating on a line like this keep an eye on player number nine for Liverpool I've got a sneaky feeling he will do well today <laughs> <laughs> he was watching videos from a week ago I love it who is this Nostradamus <laughs> of football and the red lion was never wrong <laughs> uh, here are some quotes from Icelandic commentators through the years there is much competition for competition on the side <laughs> We will take a short break and return with the second half from beyond. <laughs> <laughs> what? He is by far the second leading scorer. <laughs> That's a good one, mate. The match will be televised live on the television. <laughs> <laughs> Both teams have now played for 21 minutes. <laughs> That's John Motson's song. Yeah. <laughs> this got the flip. The card Oliver Kahn was shown in the last match has now been moved to Jens Jeremy's so that Oliver Newville no longer has one. <laughs> what is <laughs> that? Is that game? Game? <laughs> it would probably suit the Germans better to score. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. <laughs> No, no, if you want to score from that far away, you have to come closer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, it, is that from a they're coach? Excellent. They're from a excellent. coach. <laughs> they're excellent. Stefan, thank you very much for that. Brilliant. He says, uh, take care and thank you for a great show. <laughs> I'm only joking, Steve. It was a fine email. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. <laughs> Pete. I'm provide, just shocked, to be pro- honest. Provide some sanity, as you often do. Oh, yes. This is from uh, <laughs> a young man by the name of Casey Early. Casey Early? I said yes. sanity. <laughs> well, I, I know a Mr Early who used to be my English teacher. Casey's a fine first name, so yeah. Yeah, fine. Yeah, 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 Casey yeah, yeah, in the yeah, Sunshine yeah. Band or whatever they like yeah. it's called. He's a Spurs fan apparently, but it has no bearing on the story That's at all. That's he likes it. Um, keep up the good work, lads. Love listening to the show on my cycle to work, although I get a few looks when I speed past people cackling to myself. <laughs> 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 Look at me, I'm my bike! Run a, bike. <laughs> yeah. a couple of my uni mates and I went to see the riveting two-hour draw between Sweden and Japan in the Umbro Cup at the City Ground Nottingham uh, in 1995. Ooh. After the game, which had none other than Pele as a spectator, we went round to the player's entrance to see if we could get anyone's autograph uh, or, or see uh, a famous person. Um, perhaps unsurprisingly, we didn't have to fight our way to the front, although loopy Swedish keeper Ravelli would have been a oh, cat. Thomas oh, Ravelli! Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Legend. Yeah. Well, anyway, he didn't get him. But oh. we waited for a bit and then out shuffled the twinkly eyed Burt Millie chip clutching what appeared to be a lot of presents. <laughs> <laughs> like he'd found a room where there's loads for orphans and he stole them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up was the sour faced chief executive himself, Graham Kelly. I'm Remember Graham him? Kelly. Graham Hello Kelly. there. Please release the balls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seizing my chance, I leaned forward with my ticket and asked, Autograph, Mr. Kelly? He frowned but obliged, and as he was writing, I thought I'd get the banter going. Looking good on the old FA Cup draw, Mr. Kelly, I said. 
He just scowled. It gets better every year, came the monotone reply. Yeah. Uh, he handed back the ticket and walked on. We looked at the ticket, and to our astonishment, we realised that he had signed a name, crossed out, and then correctly signed his own name. The, ori <laughs> what? the original name, the original name that he wrote, was Roy Hodgson. <laughs> <laughs> How did you forget who you are? He was in charge of the whole football association at one stage. He doesn't even know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> give it to, to Gascoigne. Give it to Frank Clark. Yeah. <laughs> to this day, we can all to this day we can only speculate why he did this: alcohol, schizophrenia, or maybe just a little gag. All of the above. Expense. All of the above. Mr. Kelly, if you are listening to the football ramble, and I'm pretty sure that he is yeah, personally, yeah, yeah. Um, please spill the beans. Yeah, yeah. You please mental really, Please nut. do. Yeah. <laughs> How have you got to that position? of power. <laughs> really. Mind you, hi, Graham Taylor, so. Hmm. Mike Ashley made a billion pounds. Nothing <laughs> makes true. sense. Steve <laughs> McLaren managed England. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Diego Maradona is in charge of Argentina. We could go on. We've got a podcast that people actually listen to. Before we want to add to that list. Oh, yeah. That's a great email. Cracking. Yeah. yeah. Hang on a minute. <laughs> right, that's a no, you heard me. Are you going to be starting? <laughs> yeah, of course I am. Well, how am I going to be on the bench then? Well, club, cap <laughs> club, club captain. So club captain. <laughs> he washes the the shirt. So you'll have the you'll have a mutiny in your own. Self appointed, admittedly. <laughs> <laughs> Still club captain. Oh dear. Well, let's get uh, move away from people who make ridiculous decisions. Um, <laughs> set blatter. Um, hey. <laughs> Every time he's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody didn't have a drink last night. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, Sep has said no to replays. Okay. Uh, so we're not having them. <laughs> yeah, all it. that debate, all that debacle. <laughs> so this France is... v Ireland, no. Why want does he them. respond to things like about a month or six weeks after they happen? <laughs> Why not just... I, I believe it's glacier-like speed, James. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said, he said, uh, we slag him off, right, and this is why, because he says things like this. Referees shall remain human. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no robot referees. <laughs> no animal bird <laughs> referees <laughs> swooping around the fields. Messing it up, <laughs> looking for seeds and worms. <laughs> um, uh, and Stupid. We, and we will not have monitors to stop the game to see if we are right or wrong. I'm thinking of monitors the lizards now. Yeah. Um, yeah all monitors. <laughs> <laughs> no running, Ronaldo. Blatter said, please don't insist on this theme. <laughs> All right, that's it. He's end. He's gone. I just, just, said no. It's just a series of words. He said there will, there will be no more discussion between fans, and then no more hope, <laughs> and then no more life. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like he's trying to fit it, fit it into 140 characters on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they're just statements. Yeah. <coughs> dear, oh dear. So what he's saying is that if we bring in replays, then there'll be no more discussions between fans about the big decisions, and then there'll be no more hope for some reason, and then no more life. Well, you're the president of FIFA, and you actually <laughs> need someone to sort of translate what you're saying, like, more than once. It's, it's a bit of a communication breakdown in my opinion. What's Jack Warner saying about it? Um, Give me some money. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Warner charges a million yeah. pounds for words, so Set, they didn't ask us in the Set Blatter says there will be no replays, and Jack Warner probably says there will not be any replays unless you pay me a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> then there'll be replays. There will be no monitors on my bank account. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Email. <laughs> yeah. there's, uh, only, there's only one this week. Well, we oh. did one at the start, but we we're going we're gonna to do another one now. Mm. Mixing it up. Mixing take, it up. Take it away. I've got it in my hand. This is from Max from Bradford on Avon. Uh, hello, Ramble Buds. I feel like I need to bring to your attention the maddest footballer ever, Lars Elstrup. He was a, that is a big shout, isn't it? <laughs> maddest footballer <laughs> yeah. ever. He was, uh, he was a Danish international who played for Luton. After retiring, he became a religious revolutionary and changed his name to Durando, the river that flows in the sea. <laughs> What? <laughs> um, he joined a commune set up by Englishman Michael Barnett uh, and his wild goose company in Denmark. <laughs> no idea. No idea. However, he left after being denied the right to see his pet Dachshund. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> it's just been made up. In 2000, uh, he was spotted in the middle of the busiest pedestrian shopping street in Copenhagen, circled by a rope, waving his penis at passers-by. <laughs> oh, good stuff. His, uh, good ex stuff. his explanation was, in some respects, I do this to provoke people. Uh, <laughs> in some respects. <laughs> in some respects. I, like, uh, I like experiencing people's reactions. Some people say sod off, others take it as an offer of sex. I bet they don't. I bet they don't. In his don't. mind. Uh, when he did it in the city of Dense, he was heckled, he lost his temper. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't read this bit! <laughs> he, uh, 
He dick slapped a school child. Uh, <laughs> oh my oh, god! He, 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 he wrestled a police officer and was eventually arrested with good cause, I think. <laughs> yeah, probably, I don't arrested. know. Um, nine months on, he turned up to play football with enemy and loaded journalists. He scored five goals in, in his underpants, telling teammates to <laughs> drink more water. Yellow pisses for losers. <laughs> After the match, he was asked if he fancied a pint. No, he replied, I want pussy. And, <laughs> oh and, and then he walked away, never to be seen again. Best player ever. Yeah, Thank you wow. very much, Max from Bradford on Avon. He sounds even more mental than Carlos Roa. Yeah. <laughs> That's it's, great. It's like though. a mental special today. Yeah. Mad Jens has been in there, this fella, Robin Friday. We've actually spoken to Kenny Pagan. Yeah. <laughs> well, I take it then. Oh, birds and geezers, it's profile time. And, uh who we got today. Well, do you know something? Now, we've got many, many good players. Teams, stadium, matches, t- tournaments, all the, rest of, all the rest of it in there. But uh, currently, it's mayhem in there. <laughs> it is mayhem in there. And I'm, I'm scared to look. <laughs> it's like when you haven't tidied your room for ages, you just think, no, <laughs> leave it. I went once, didn't go back. And I'll tell you why it's mayhem, Pete. There isn't a referee. <gasps> Why not? Jeff Winter? <laughs> is, it, is he not in there? <laughs> Piss off. <laughs> <laughs> Pierre Luigi Colina. Oh! Hey. Hey. To the point, we mentioned this a few weeks ago, but um, there's obviously been a lot of controversy in Italy apparently recently about some bad refereeing decisions and uh, quite high profile. And the, the Napoli fans feel particularly aggrieved and they've been wearing masks of Colina. That's as class. A sort of sign of sort it out, which is yeah. brilliant. That is super. He's like, the only referee I know of or can think of that's so well loved. I mean, mm. you know. There's definitely not another one, certainly in the modern era, that's as popular as him. Yeah. Where did you get a mask from? That's what yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could have been an Uncle Festa mask. <laughs> Come on. That was the thing. I think he was well respected because genuinely he didn't have, he wasn't particularly fat, he wasn't particularly <laughs> thin, he just, he, he had a very um, simple face. It was just a big egg and um, <laughs> and res- and people just didn't that's have anything to, oh he's got a big nose. He's nothing, got big... nothing to do with his referee no. ability. No. <laughs> just because he stands out because his face looks like an egg. <laughs> <laughs> really, not really grasp the concept of this profile, have you? <laughs> <laughs> if, if we've learnt nothing in this life, having a face like an egg is an automatic indicator of respect. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, uh, um, very good. Uh, he says his most memorable matches are, um, in his words, he said there was the World Cup final in 2002, which is obviously... Well, it's the most high-profile game in the world, therefore yeah, yeah. it's his own most high-profile The world game. has ever known. He was a real feature in that final. I remember yeah. sort of, sort of almost plumping That's through. That's an egg! <laughs> Robin <laughs> Barone! <laughs> Big old egg! Yeah. <laughs> um, what, was, what I loved about Kalina was... Pete was about to say, I was really pulling... Like, you were supporting the referee. Supporting the referee? <laughs> Who was I going to support, then? That's what you've got to ask <laughs> yourself. Ronaldo in Brazil? Nah. Um, um, notable, another notable egg. <laughs> <laughs> Like maybe a different kind of animal name. <laughs> He's never been called that before. <laughs> Ronaldo's <laughs> just gone on the, onto the Brazilian Big Brother. I wonder if they described him as a as notable egg. <laughs> <laughs> a notable egg does sound like a sort of Brazilian nickname. <laughs> <Bloody good album. laughs> El Phenomeno, you know, the notable egg. Got a lot of names, Eginho. <laughs> Eginho. 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 I like that. Oh god. Um. Scrambling my brain. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> well, uh, on that bombshell, Pete, I'll move on. Eggshell. <laughs> oh, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Just sorry, everyone. Um, I think it speaks volumes about Kalina that he, you know, a, a lot of referees, you think of them as being this sort of almost traffic warden style people, but he doesn't seem like that. He seems like the sort of bloke who would actually be a really sort of decent bloke. And, you know, can you imagine going out for a pint with Mark Clattenburg, <laughs> going down the fun fair with Chris Foy? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think Kalina does seem a decent bloke, although obviously he has, has his troubles. We were talking about the alopecia thing. I think I know what it was, actually, that um, would have sparked this off. Uh, apparently he once fell off a wall. I uh, had a great fall. Oh, and, uh, uh, the, the, the king got all of his men and his horses, like to try and sort him out, but it oh, didn't quite work. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Ladies and gentlemen, I've returned, <laughs> and I apologise. I just walked off in disgust. <laughs> James, <laughs> and such flippancy. Well, he's, he's, the manager um, George Shepherd said he's a very good player and he'd be a big miss to Haywick United. Well, oh. uh, incidentally, the club uh, was also fined 150 pounds. <laughs> So that's about as notorious as you can get as a um, amateur footballer, really. Yeah. Like as, as, as any level of football. I, I've actually played a game uh, in, on a Sunday uh, back down uh, in Portsmouth, where I'm from, where um, a, a guy 
let's say a particularly angry gentleman <laughs> the sort of type of player you know you get in the sort of Sunday leagues where it's like the highlight of his week to play football on a Sunday yeah. and uh, everything's geared up towards that I mean he's beaten up by his boss every every day and stuff and um he got sent off by the referee completely fairly because he punched the goalkeeper. <laughs> then he got in the car and tried to drive his car on the pitch to get the ref. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, that's something that you'd never get like uh, there was a, oh there was an 11 on uh, 11 on 11 ma- like f- fighting match uh, that, that started after um, 11 a side match that was in um, where the, our striker just punched the goalkeeper God. and you just but it, th- the thing is with professional matches there's stewards there's policemen yeah, yeah. but it just goes on no. and on and on you're like going, this is massive yeah. and it's yeah. never going to stop this is <laughs> ever. Just, how this is, is just stop? a big fight now <laughs> in the, right. in, in a, on a football field how does yeah. this end I can remember the guy who, ra- who drove his car on the pitch um, I can remember in the pub afterwards because uh, it, it all became pretty cordial after that and it was all sorted <laughs> out I went to the pub afterwards and I, one of my overriding memories is one of their players their captain I think saying to our manager yeah but when all said and done yeah I don't think he deserved to be sent off and our manager was like he punched our keeper in the face <laughs> <laughs> I love that Sunday league mentality I, remember, I, was, I was playing once for a Sunday league side and our goalkeeper he um I don't know, he wasn't an aggressive bloke, but obviously he'd got out of bed the wrong side. And he was just like wanting to have it with everybody. Yeah. And he'd started on some play. He had the ball in his hands, and so this player had been winding him up all game. And so what he did, and the ball's still in play, yeah. he thought he'd act the hard man. He had the ball in his hands. Someone shouted something. And you know, he just threw the ball down and marched over to him. He just threw the ball like into the play. Guy, the play. The striker nip in. No, fortunately, our defender was savvy and managed to block oh it and got God. it away. We were like, "What the hell are you doing? The ball's still in play." <laughs> what the keeper say? He, he went over and he like by the guy got sent off. That's outrageous. But can you imagine that? He's got the ball and he just was like, Whoa, and he just chucked the ball down. Moron. I, I got. Um, I've been sent off at Sunday League uh, with for two yellows because uh, I got a yellow card for just a tackle or something, and uh, we we're, we we're playing balls through to our striker. And you know what it's like in Sundays when they have like one of the opposition players. With, with the linesman's flag yeah, yeah. so he, he crawls yeah. the offside and sometimes you get issues like sort of instances of, of blatant cheating and, and obviously it happened in our team as well that's just the way it goes it ruins it a little bit but their linesman was flagging for everything all the time yeah, oh yeah. and I was going a bit mental I was going this is silly you know we want to just not have any linesmen and the referee said to me uh, yeah, any more of that you know, you'll be a second yellow and you'll be off and then um, someone played the ball through uh, and the guy nipped in and he took it around the keeper and, and uh, put it wide right and I saw the flag go up and I couldn't help myself I just went ballistic right I was like that is an absolute disgrace the effort of blind of this stuff got sent off and as I was walking off I realised that he was actually flagging for a goal kick <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I, didn't, I didn't say anything, but I think loads of people know. Did the keeper get a touch? No, no, he didn't. He should <laughs> yeah, have been no. a corner. It was clearly a goal kick. That well. should not have been an effing goal kick. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a low oh, point. Dear. That was a football low point. That is a low. <laughs> Don't mess it up. All right. Hello, Ramblers. Ho! Oh. Hello. Oh. At a South End match a few months ago, oh, I, was, yeah. I was nestled in the West Stand enjoying mm. the game when the linesman gave a marginal offside against Lee Barnard. Wow. I do that sometimes. This decision <laughs> seemed to have annoyed a rather large guy two rows behind who stood up and shouted, What have you done with the real line, oh fella? Did you put him in a cupboard, <laughs> steal his kit and flag and then come out and pretend you're him? Go away, you twat. <laughs> <laughs> Bit harsh. I'll take it that's verbatim. At this point, everyone around us just turned to each other and cracked up laughing. So my question is, what is the most ridiculous thing you've heard shouted at a football match? Keep up the good work, Mark Kendrick. Thanks, Mark. Good question. Ooh. Pete, you go first. Yeah, um, pull it. Go on. <laughs> was it this is going to be amazing, isn't it? Hartlepool United. Yep. Um, people sing Blue Moon quite a lot. Blue Moon, I saw you standing alone. Because they play in blue. Yeah. And um, there was a guy, really, really drunk guy. What did he, he looked a bit like, like a thin Neville Southall. Imagine the big ginger, t- uh, big ginger tash, <laughs> slightly balding, uh, big fat face, basically. Southall wasn't ginger. And he was, be- he, was behind <laughs> All right. he was behind me on the terracing in the down end. And... Um, he was, he was so drunk, he was using the rest of the crowd to, to sort of balance on. So he was sort of doing <laughs> a bit of a Superman over everyone. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, I'd i never heard the start of ba 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 blue moon. But so, from right in my ears, as loud as you could possibly hear, all I heard was ba 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 And I thought this man had malfunctioned. <laughs> I thought, oh my, what you were you going to do? Do you want it? Ba, 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 ba. 
He did way too many bars. There's about 20 bars. There's a boom. Pete, how many bars should, should they have? Uh, well, ba 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 ba. There's a few. There's a few, there's a few bars. Eight to ten. Eight but, to ten. But surely in that song, that's another fella singing the ba ba ba. Just start with the blue moon. Don't worry about ba 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 ba. Yeah. Mental. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, that's class. That is brilliant. Mark, I hope that's a good answer. <laughs> Everton and Arsenal have both got decent run-ins, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a real real that's battle right. for them. Mm. To, to, sorry for, for teams to keep up with them. But I thought that um, Ferguson's getting more magnanimous these days. He was is like, he? Everton were the better side. I know Ferguson loves Moyes. He yeah. loves Moyes, doesn't he? Yeah. And Everton were the better side, but it doesn't normally sort of stand in the way of Ferguson. Yeah, he, uh, he did surprise me there. Yeah. Well, Jack Rodwell and uh, Dan Goslin scored goals for Everton. Good to see a couple of... Uh, I think they're local lads. They are, they are. Yeah, yeah. Jack Rodwell's from Southport, I think, which is right, you know, right close. So, That's right, yeah. I mean... A ridiculously I, I overhyped by Andrew Ray went mental basically as you said because Jack Rodwell paced past Johnny Evans who was yeah. absolutely yeah. Yeah. St- exhausted but, Rod- by that but point, Rodwell yeah. didn't do it particularly gracefully or anything he just no. he came up to him and he knocked it past him and great finish it, fi- it was a good finish yeah. but the way gra- you've got to be a particularly special player <laughs> footballer to do that and I say footballer because that's what he is that's clear to up for me bloody I hell was, I thought he was a hot air balloonist <laughs> I'm just drinking on the job Job, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, I, I think if there's one thing young English players need, though, it's to be massively, massively hot when they do even one thing that's remotely yeah. good. Get him on that plane. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be flying it with his talent, Luke. I couldn't believe what, how he was going. And on. I say a plane because that's what it is. <laughs> 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 but he, he did play well, and they, they all played well. It was a great performance by Everton. And Manchester United. So I had it's like them coming out of a cave. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's okay. For, yeah. Uh, it's email time. Uh, James, I believe you've got one for us. I do, indeed. Uh, with recent talk of the lack of inspiration in goal celebrations these days, I have a scenario for you. Ooh. The Ramble Force has been selected to go to South Africa and you score the goal to win the World Cup. How do you celebrate? That's from Kurt Baker. What, should we go oh. one after another then? Yeah, go who's, for sorry, it. who's that from? Kurt that Baker. is from sorry, Kurt Baker. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a big fan of the old. Um, if it was a goal this important, I knew you were going to say this. No, well, you know what I'm going to say. I know exactly what you're going to say. It. 1982, Italy. No, I'm not going to do that. No, that's, oh, that's okay. cliche. That's cliche. Well, that's I, 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 I'd like to think if it was the Ramble Force I was scoring for, yeah. and it was like to win the World Cup. I think I'd leg it, but I'd do the old "Come on, get, call you all oh, over." Okay, yeah, come yeah, on, yeah. come on, that one. You know. <laughs> well, what I would do. Um, it's difficult. It's not really an audio feature. This is well, it. No, well, what, <laughs> what I would do is, um, I think we talked about it again last week when in the the, the profile where back in the day when Brazilian players scored like everyone would gather around them with microphones oh yeah I'd score I'd get you boys around me and we'd just do a ramble there and then well you didn't say come, <laughs> come and meet me. come and meet a goal scorer <laughs> <laughs> it's probably what I'd do James what would you fancy well, if, it's the, if it's the goal to win the World Cup right, yeah. we're, we're going to assume that it's the last kick of the game the yeah. whistle goes just as the ball's gone in the net we've won what I would do is I'd celebrate wildly I'd get everyone down I'd get Seth Blatter on the f- <laughs> on, just on the pitch Right, and I'd roll around on the floor, right? Well, so he was, so he was on his back, yeah. And while he was celebrating and lulled into a full sense of security, <laughs> I, I would sharpshoot to him. <laughs> Why would that? Seth wouldn't be celebrating your goal. I'd make him. I'd, just, I'd be so <laughs> pumped <laughs> up. Firstly, you're English. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Logistically, that's a very tough celebration. Yeah. Secondly, he'd I'd never get off. down there quick enough. He's a big, <laughs> <laughs> he had attempted with some king prawns, <laughs> <laughs> lobster. Hey, what you, could, you, do? you could get uh, Jack Warner down there in a flash. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah, some money. cash, yeah. <laughs> hey, what would you do? Down from the stand. Uh, I'd probably probably do a quite a respectful, quiet one. I'd remove <laughs> a pair of mittens from my uh, shin pads. I'd uh, put them on, run into uh, into the dugout, garrot my manager, and then wet myself, and then. <laughs> <laughs> That's my <laughs> And that would definitely be one to remember. Cup, to win the World Cup. That's one to remember. Everyone will be talking about it. Did you see him? He got his mittens out and then he wore the mittens and then he got in the moment with, with the string from the mittens. It was, <laughs> Presumably, you know, these are all going on at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> these celebrations. I might draw a diagram for yeah, it on, yeah. on, online. My one feels a little bit tame then. I reckon, <laughs> Luke, let's be honest, Luke. Yeah. You would remove every piece of your clothing. Yeah. Probably would, actually. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd just quite like, I'd just run out the stadium. I'd do the Antonio Cassano. <laughs> <laughs> pick up the World Cup and just go. <laughs> yeah. Be running down the street with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even a cup! <laughs> <laughs> to cash converters. <laughs> Woo! I, I probably would do an Antonio Cassano, take all my clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> Eat loads of food. Oh, that's a cracking email, that yeah. was. Argentinian model. 
Analia Sarkis says she's going to be revealing appalling details of her affair <laughs> with... <laughs> Pete Donaldson! <laughs> 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 appalling details, oh, that's what you yeah. think. <laughs> what a revelation. Yeah. A.K.A. Diego Armando Maradona. El in, Diego. In her new book, Time for Release, ahead of the World Cup. Is that, um, is that his current... Is that the one that he... he His current he, disgrace. He is that the one that yeah. he yeah, 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 yeah. No, this is a different one, No, I this think. is the one where he... Oh, no, 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 onions. it isn't the one he burped, sorry. That was another one. Oh, right, it was um, the onions and, and he... he that, that, onions. That and he was... pumped as well. He <laughs> 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 didn't, didn't, didn't eggy Trump. <laughs> Past wind, yes. <laughs> yeah. This is, um... Uh, well, um, Analia says that uh, his body is unpredictable, but our love was real. What does what that mean? I love the translations. Like a lava amazing. lump. Because our left, because our right. Lava <laughs> lamp. Whoever's doing the translations is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, the one you're referring to is last year, the model uh, Natalia Rosas uh, Muniz um, described her. Uh, she Apparently, she cashed in on her affair with Maradona. I can't understand why. Yeah. Um, she was posing for a photo shoot with the letter M sprayed on her buttocks in shaving cream. <laughs> Classy lady. She said that uh, she about the Diego business. She said that he was very nervous, um, and uh, when he kissed me, he left a taste of onions. So I had to have a soft drink. Um, but uh, then she said I heard in a loud noise something that I thought the chair was creaking, but no, Diego had broken wind. The chair probably was creaking as well. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, he but became yet more nervous. Similar, don't they, yeah. those things? She said, he never begged my pardon, but it didn't matter. He is a romantic and deep thinker. Oh, what a night. Oh, what a night. Kiss me. <laughs> I, I, I think I would be a bit annoyed if my body was described as unpredictable. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really get what it means. It's the same as what he was on the football field. He could go left, he could go right. Yeah. yeah. The man's had his stomach stapled. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> this is true. You know, <laughs> medically unpredictable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> his stitcher could, could pop at any moment. Yeah. <laughs> and it might smell of onions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Great well, player of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Good. In jokes, the best kind of joke. <laughs> Peter. Uh, I've got an email in my hands. What you gonna do about that? We're gonna, right, listen, we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> yeah. let you read it. Dan Zell is the name of the man who uh, sent this one in with his oh. computer. Diesel. Uh, this is. He, he says he starts the email with uh, Ramble Foss Hall. Oh. Ever occurred to you that that's a type of lower league South American player, like uh, who could crop up and championship manager back in the day? <laughs> Gramble Force Hall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, loving this sporadically ongoing funny things heard at football matches item on the show. Thought I'd just offer an absolute peach I heard at Loftus Road a couple of years ago. It was just before Christmas 2008 during a, a quarter past five kickoff versus top of the table Wolves. Specific. Very specific. The extra couple of hours in the pub pre match could certainly be felt. The West London crowd <laughs> and their travelling black country counterparts were in full. Beery voice. I sit nearest the away end where there's a fair amount of repartee between the home and visiting fans. This game was no different. A, a group of Super Hoops fans behind me had identified one particularly loud Wolves fan as the focus of all their witticisms. It sometimes happens like that, doesn't it? They yeah, 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 yeah. And for the second half, this fan had emerged wearing a Santa hat. Uh, this was picked up by the uh, the Rangers fans. Uh, one of them bellowing over with a typically eloquent uh, Shepherd's Bush diction. Oi, what are you wearing that stupid hat for then? The Wolves, fan, <laughs> the Wolves fan then shouted back with a typically eloquent Midlands diction, it's baby Jesus' birthday soon, in it. <laughs> in it. Wild esque. In it. O- Oscar Wild Essex game. <laughs> the QPR fan then, rather lamely, retorts, oh yeah, having a nice party, I use, and it all dies down and goes quiet. <laughs> that, is, that is like two bald men fighting over a cone. <laughs> yeah. Or at least it does for a few seconds. A good six or seven rows away, one particularly belagered gentleman, who, up until now, has had no involvement in the exchange <laughs> and in fact may well have been fully asleep suddenly stands bolt upright thrusts his arms open wide think Michael Jackson Earth Song <laughs> leans his head back and his voice thick syrupy with booze and full hearted proclaims to the skies as loud as he can just once the immortal line bring out the jelly <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> that is a great shout. Uh, actually, it, it was to the tune of uh, uh, Horsfield for England. So oh, bring yes. out the, the jelly. jelly. <laughs> bring, bring out, out the jelly. jelly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he then he then immediately no, he fl- said it once. He then immediately <laughs> flops back into his seat after saying it once, and presumably with a bowl well, of jelly. Presumably <laughs> flops. Presumably his erstwhile slumber. Meanwhile, everyone's laughing. Uh, what s- did he think I've was s- happening? <laughs> yeah, I think he just heard the word party. Maybe yeah. so I can't even meet him <laughs> halfway. Here. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I've since seen the bloke a few times at the ground, and I know I'm not the only one to keep my ears peeled for when he decides to grace us with uh, some lyrical <laughs> profundity yeah. once again. Ice anyway, cream for England. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, chaps, uh, come on, you Rangers. Stop <laughs> ragging on young Marcus. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> he was a good player. Not good enough. No, fair enough. For some. <laughs> <laughs> I was known as Beardsley in the Hartlepool... Because uh, you're more a physical stepper. thing, isn't it? Because <laughs> 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 I used to have a Beardsley top, Did and you? everyone used to call me Beardsley. Didn't you used to play for, with Michael Brown when you were young? No, I was in a park once and he came over and played football. Did with he us. break your leg? No, he was threatened by a man on a bike with a hammer <laughs> later on. Did I tell you about That's that? That's what turned him to the dark side. Did I tell you about that? He was, like, he was, uh, um, he was it, wasn't, it wasn't him, but it, there was a guy who, who, we sort of, this guy turned up and he looked a bit like Trevor Sinclair. <laughs> And a man who looks like Trevor let's Sinclair. Say it, let's say it was Trevor Sinclair for the benefit of this <laughs> yeah. story. Well, it was a footballing thing. Like, oh my God, we're playing with... Uh, I'm, I'm trying was to he famous he in for, He it? played for... I think he was playing for... He was, he was on, he was on loan. Hammer. He was on loan in Hart, uh, for Hartlepool at the time, but he was, right. uh, he was on the kick round. And, uh, and this fellow looked like Trevor Sinclair came up. And, you know, he's Hartlepool. There ain't that many people who look like Trevor Sinclair. No, no, so, no. No. Not on bikes with hammers, anyway. So he, he was threatening this other guy who we'd um, pictured as um, Super Mario because he had a moustache. <laughs> right. He was a young lad, but he had a moustache. Stash. So we were calling him Super Mario And uh, this man came with a hammer and stuff And Michael Brown mediated between the two Apparently the, the man with the hammer was annoyed Because Super Mario had borrowed some money from a girl And Michael Brown was going Just leave it, just don't worry about it We'll sort it out, it's fine But anyway, it all got sorted out in the end And uh, Trevor Sinclair went off Did you play a game or not? Well, we, played, Tre- a ma- we played a match, yeah Did Trevor Sinclair contribute any overhead kicks from no. outside the area? <laughs> Bicycle <laughs> kicks <laughs> off of his oh, bike Oh yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah. I once uh, I was Hammered it in Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, good one James I was... Uh, on the head oh yeah <laughs> when I was living in Edinburgh um, we played oh what is the name of it it's close to, is fighting it fighting yeah no no <laughs> it, it was football but it was Fibber. I think it was away in, in Nidri and if anybody in Edinburgh is listening they'll know exactly what I'm talking about there and one of our players well like knock out Wembley or something no no sorry this is for a proper team oh, okay, Nidri's right. a very uh, uh, rough and ready area okay right and one of our players didn't get on well with the locals and he was a little bit concerned when uh, he turned up for the game thinking that he might get beaten up and in the changing room when we were getting changed uh, I noticed that he'd had he'd got a big hammer in his bag and I said uh, I said uh, what the hell have you got that for and he went protection my friend (laughs) (laughs) on the pitch (laughs) going to put it down his sock (laughs) outrageous Uh, it's mayhem in FIFA not unlike the studio shall shall I do an email if you (laughs) bloody would please I'll save it. Do yeah. I repeat, yeah? <laughs> 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 All right, Ramblers. Ho. Ho. Oh. Having watched Slumdog Millionaire, don't be in the email just yet, it gets relevant. <laughs> I learned that Jack Hobbs is the all time highest run scorer in professional cricket. Yeah. The Leicester City centre back, formerly of Liverpool, is therefore surely the greatest all rounder of all time. Um, so, my question stemming from this is which current Premiership player would make the best stab at another professional sport? My answer would have to be Christopher Samba as a second row rugby player. Cheers, lads. Tom Vergesi. But um, yeah, I would go for Wayne Rooney as a rugby player because his sense of oh, positioning is really, really Wayne good. Wayne Rooney's a boxer. His dad was a boxer. That's true, actually. A my boxer and a rugby player. He's an all yeah. rounder. He can do a couple of I sports. think Carlos Tevez would be good at table tennis. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a hunch. Michael Owen could have played snooker and golf professionally, couldn't he? Hey, he's a scratch golfer. Allegedly, yeah. yeah, yeah. Craig Bellamy, golf, the way he's. Oh, hey. oh, good. Yeah, I like that. Excellent. Stephen Carr, Formula One. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's Uh-oh. so bad it's actually alright Thanks. Uh-oh. we've entered pun territory <laughs> yeah. like we do every Wah! week on this show <laughs> pun we don't uh, do this on the other show the, the floodgates are officially open yeah. <laughs> <laughs> punts yeah. oh, God. Uh, why do I do this every week El El Hadj Juice Tennis. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a beauty. That's superb. Oh, yeah. Great stuff. How did you? Um, <laughs> I got one for ice hockey. Go on, Darren Puckerby. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> you having that one, Marcus? <laughs> um, I've got another one for basketball. Duncan Ferguson. Oh, good. <laughs> good. Good one. <laughs> Slam Duncan Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> 
with the Winter Olympics on, Skeletoni Cascarina. <laughs> 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 uh, not bad at all. Uh, we're getting there, aren't we? Just two more. That's all we need. Come on. <laughs> That's all we need. Two, two more. Two more for our quota. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ex West Ham player, Tony Gaelic football. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Tony Gale. Tony Gaelic the football. The first, possibly the first time Tony Gale's ever been mentioned on the football. <laughs> <round>. <laughs> Hopefully the last. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Etherington as a professional wrestler. Matt! <laughs> <laughs> That's the best I can do. Beyond, beyond the mat, Etherington. <laughs> yeah. I think we'll leave it there. <laughs> Forever. I think I've got an email, Marcus. What? Oh, Gordon Bennett. Which may or may not be slightly connected. Uh, <laughs> it's from a young man. It is, isn't it? It's from a fellow Let's by hope. the name of Doomy from uh, Birmingham. Doomy? Doomy. Well, D-U-M-I, so... Right. Yeah. That'll do. do me. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Rambo Force, ho 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 a bit of E at the end. Uh, I was listening to the last few podcasts and heard you guys mention the Ghana supporter who goes to the match with a steaming African pot on his head. Yes. Uh, I had also noticed the guy and decided to do a spot of investigative journalism and find out more information about him for the readers. Turns yeah. out he's a popular figure in Ghana and is their biggest fan. His full name is Samuel Agre and is popularly known as Abuor. Quality. <laughs> uh, he, attends, he attends every Ghana match, even friendlies, and is always carrying his pot. He was at the German 2006. <laughs> he was at the Germany 2006 uh, World Cup, African Cup of Nations 2008 and 2010, and even uh, the Egyptian 2009 World Youth Championships. <laughs> he wonderful. was he was once at the centre of an international row between Ghana and Angola after he was famously. <laughs> After he was famously assaulted by Angolan stadium security oh. after an Africa Cup of Nations match, this uh, is the, the security had accused him of using juju, witchcraft, uh, and they destroyed his pot. No. Oh. Can you imagine? <laughs> Boo. Boo. <laughs> Down with Angola. Uh, yeah. Ghana made an official complaint to uh, the Confederation of uh, African Football, so and the incident was only forgiven after the president of Angola made a personal apology <laughs> and, <laughs> and personally and personally replaced the broken pot. <laughs> This is sensational. Uh, I decided to dig deeper into this guy's interesting story. Feel free. Yeah. Feel free to do me. <laughs> uh, and find out how he gets his pot to steam. Now, this is what I want to ah! know. <laughs> I think uh, Doomy is him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's doing his own PR. Right, and Turn- a pot on his head. <laughs> oh, my God. Turns out it isn't some form of magic trick. He actually burns wood and placards in the pot. <laughs> 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 contravention of FIFA rules <laughs> which surely rules him out of England 2008 the fated uh, England 2008 because of the smoking ban 2018 yeah 2018 sorry yeah. Uh, in, rules him out going out back in time <laughs> <laughs> well if he's got enough juju he might be able to do it yeah true <laughs> <laughs> this guy had me thinking about how a lot of countries seem to have one standout supporter they're the South American guy who dresses as a huge bird and Birdman Columbian Columbian Birdman. Birdman. he's up there with the Colombian Birdman yeah. Yeah. yeah there's Manuel the fat Spanish drummer I don't, no, I don't no, know, I don't know, know that is. Benitez? And, and, uh, <laughs> and of course England have the band. Make an effort, lads. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is profile time. And uh, this is a man who I think I've certainly wanted to do for a while. Um. If you pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've let the cat out of the bag. Um, and I'm going to move on quickly. You um, put the cat in the bag with yeah. force. <laughs> well, let me stop you there and say Carlos Alberto Valderrama. Hey. Good. It was all there. Um, the Valderrama family, um, a friend of mine said that they're known to some Colombians as the uh, the royal family of football in Colombia. Wow. Apparently his dad, who's also called Carlos, but um, Jerico was his nickname, was a good player back in the 60s. Um, his his uncle, Alex Didi Valderrama, was a decent player, and his, his brothers, um, Alan and Ronald, were, were good players. Alan Valderrama! <laughs> <laughs> Is that serious? Alan Valderrama, pleased to meet you. Royal Family Football, uh, the man's a bit rubbish. Now. A bit rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is it- I've never seen you laugh like that, Luke. Look at his face. Yeah. Incidentally, other brother Steve didn't make it. <laughs> oh god, that's brilliant, Alan Valderrama. <laughs> run, run, run out of names or something. <laughs> <laughs> Who's who's naming him? Neville Neville? (laughs) (laughs) Oh Oh dear. Ronald's just as bad. All right, there we go. Yeah, yeah, that that was the cool. Crystal Maze. Get out! <laughs> yeah. Get out, out of Diego Corner. About time. Um, yeah, do you remember um, Matt, testicle Matt? <laughs> <laughs> from, oh, Mexico, yeah. from Mexico City. Yeah, the guy with the problem with his testicle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's emailed us again. <laughs> Matt in Mexico City. Uh, oh. Greetings from Mexico. 
Uh, Mexico Testico. was kicking off. Uh, oh, sorry, Testico. <laughs> Testico City. <laughs> uh, Mexico was kicking after the France game. Car horns constantly beeping. Little Ooh. old ladies screaming. Chicharito in your face. Random women wearing too much makeup kissing you in the street. Ooh, it's a bit like Portsmouth. Uh, a, li- a little bit flat now after <laughs> the Uruguay ladies. game, but still fantastic. Uh, bring on Argentina. Although I did predict a Holland Argentina final from the start. Um, Marcus, update on the lucky statue. Which yeah. Is called, oh, right. Yes, mm, I was it's asking. Called, it's called the Angel. Uh, well, it's still here. It's massive, so I have no idea how they plan to move it. There are two statues in the centre of town, the Angel and the Diana, and this is where loads of fans go crazy when Mexico win. Uh-huh. They're also in the middle of about five lanes of Mexico traffic, mm. so I'm not sure how they would have... Uh, <laughs> Just go around them. As for the testicle, that is much better. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, well done, the testicle again. It's yeah. not in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> well, let's get in there. Um, it's not all bad. There's a show... Hall of Fame. He said, <laughs> <laughs> he said he's back at work now, and it's not all bad, because they're showing all of the Mexico and England games. Games. By the way, Pete, oi, I oi. do you think you might get the sack? Oh. Oh. <laughs> Come on, I've got to say it. By the way, Pete, I haven't been doing anything untoward. I'm a bit worried as to where you stick your testicle. <laughs> <laughs> I Ram- could write you a list. Ram force hole. Cheers, Matt. Well done, Matt. Cheers, Matt. <laughs> Sorry that. Get the FIFA court Put her in FIFA jail yeah. oh, Actually if FIFA listened to it That's probably evidence <laughs> <laughs> Probably uh, Not uh, say something I may later rely on in court Dear oh dear Now uh, It's that time again For Diego Corner I'm uh, can, can you hear me Luke? Yeah, I've got you loud and clear. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. It's okay. worth pointing out that Diego Corner is actually a big yoghurt that, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Luke is sat in. As well, we this, week I've a- <laughs> this week I've actually got Diego with me. Have you? Yeah, no, not really. Ah, oh, sure. No, no. Um, but, um, what's, what's, what's going on over there? Just usual stuff, really. Candles and There's no such of thing as no, usual. Sorry. Un- <laughs> sorry, that again. Unusual stuff, actually, really, yeah. <laughs> so, it's full of loads of people called Diego. <laughs> so, Brazilian star Diego, who missed out there? on the Brazil's called Four Lands, yeah. chilling out. Diego Four yeah. Oh, Diego okay. Tristan Melito yeah, there Melito's in. everyone's here it's brilliant um, <laughs> but yeah so uh, d- we saw Diego get involved in a bit of a uh, was he peacemaker in the 50 cups he, he was, was actually he was yeah he was getting amongst it he's so short though bless him that he couldn't really get involved yeah, didn't yeah. He? but you could see them all crowded around him and, and, and as always he was like the centre of attention um, <laughs> but um, going into the Germany match uh, it's Saturday isn't it it is yes. he, he's, uh, he's piped up and said I want to place on my jersey and play yes, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Good. he's building up for the final <laughs> <laughs> Great Get start. him on And he also He could be like Blanco he, he, Yeah that'd be brilliant <laughs> Well you know his Blanco didn't come on Against Lars Didn't no. you <laughs> No It's probably for the best Yeah, yeah, yeah. His career would never be The same again uh. um, He dedicated the win Against uh, Mexico To um, a MotoGP rider Valentino Rossi Oh yes <laughs> Cos <Yeah>. Said <laughs> something what? like People thought I don't, These things These two quotes <laughs> Don't really match up It's odd <laughs> It's like a stream of consciousness Where he just picks Different things From different parts of his brain And they come yeah. up together <laughs> There are two things I want to say. People thought I knew nothing about how to be a coach, and I want to dedicate this victory to Valentino Rossi. <laughs> <laughs> Did Valentino Rossi say he couldn't yeah. be a coach or something? Weird. <laughs> but Maradona does like to do things against people, doesn't he? Rather oh, than sort of as an achievement in itself. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah. Big time. And who and who, and who does Diego? Apart from the English, who does Diego um, <laughs> dislike the most? Germany. Pele. Oh yeah, shit, Pele. All right. <laughs> apart from him, <laughs> <laughs> journalists, obviously. Yeah, oh, of course. Um, and he piped up with a great shout today. It was absolutely superb. <laughs> uh, many journalists should apologise to my players. But this is because they thought he was a rubbish. Oh yeah, because because they were touted because he's used loads of players and, and in and qualification and they were awful. Yeah, I'm not suggesting you drop your trousers. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be honest and great so we all get along better that you apologise. <laughs> I'm turning 50 and I am not bitter. Mm, don't mm. know about that. But I get annoyed when people don't respect my players. It isn't easy going from being nobody's back home to winning three matches at a World Cup. At a training camp, we had to swallow what you journalists all said about being a disaster. The worst Argentine team you'd ever seen. All of a sudden, we were an excellent team. The most handsome people in the barrio. <laughs> oh, the no nice. Yeah, yeah. Great stuff. <laughs> Oh, it's oh. a great place to be, I tell you. <laughs> you know, great place to be. Mm. Luke, you've got the last one. Well, yeah, bear with me, because this is quite a long one, but it, it, it is worth it. Um, Ramble Force, ho! Oh. I thought oh. I would drop you an email and fill you in on my conundrum. I have faced this conundrum for the past four years. When I first joined my current firm, I got talking to the big boss, and turns out he supports Manchester United. Is this a Nigerian email where we have to <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 loads yeah. of money in our account? Just get your card out, yeah? <laughs> um, in fact, he has a couple of season tickets at Old Trafford. We talk for a few minutes about football and then go our separate ways. I'm happy as I think I've made a good impression on my new boss. Over the next few weeks, he sees me around the corridor and 
starts mentioning the Spurs results to me. I think this is odd, but I always smile and nod politely back. After a few weeks and months of this happening, it dawns on me that he thinks I'm a Spurs fan. This is the point I should have stopped him and set the record straight. I don't know. Why rock the boat? <laughs> As the season draws to an end, he comes into my office and tells me that he's a tickets for the Manchester United Spurs game at Old Trafford and would like to take me up there with a couple of his other Spurs pals. I should, of course, have stopped him here again, but I had never been to Old Trafford before, so I jumped at the chance. <laughs> and then he's put, what harm could it do? <laughs> After first Was that on the company? Yeah <laughs> Well this is what he says After first okay. class travel to Manchester Dinner and a night at a nice hotel And a chance to see my beloved In quote Spurs at Old Trafford <laughs> I realise I can never go back <laughs> <laughs> Four years on And I've now been to every game At Old Trafford Involving Manchester United and Spurs <laughs> Including two FA Cup games A couple of times I've even had to trouble up on my own Because my boss couldn't make it I have had to adopt a Spurs fan persona in my office I have to be happy when they win Distraught when they lose And when a new person joins and talks about football I have to tell them I support Spurs I even had to go and tag along to a few games at the lane To not arouse suspicion amongst my colleagues It's like being trapped in hell <laughs> <laughs> I fear the only way to end this is to quit my job or commit suicide. Other than that, I could probably just support Spurs full time. Let the harsh reality of my plight be a lesson to you all. Never lie about who you follow, it'll only cause you problems in the long run. Anyway, I'm off now to have the Spurs badge tattooed on my arm. Never let the mask slip. <laughs> Keep up the good work with the Ramble Hall, oh, and that's from Kevin Carruthers, who's a Leeds fan. <laughs> <laughs> That is <laughs> Do you know what? I didn't think that when I was writing it all down. Oh, come on, let's not cheap it. Let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't drink water when you're laughing. You should know, you should know better. <laughs> Can you I know where the French Revolution was. I let's not drink water when I'm laughing. He started to. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were about to go. <laughs> Sorry, Pete. Stop it. Well, I'm not doing anything, I'm just sitting you're a, here. I know what you're about to Don't do. Look at me and look at that. Right. Come on now. I've got I've got to get home, so <laughs> <laughs> For Deportivo he finished uh <laughs> <laughs> Just don't think about it. Right. Right, we're on, come on. Um For Deportivo he finished Second in two seasons running. <laughs> 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 Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs>